Okay, it's it's already 11. I, I don't know. Can we? Why don't you turn it in and then we'll talk about after class. Is that all right? Okay. So please turn in what you have. If you have any questions, we can let's address it at the end of class. Just set them right there. Thank you. And I do have a request. Um, next time, next time that we meet, <laughs> if you could please bring the 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 first quiz that you had, the take home one. If you bring that back, I didn't put the grades in. So I don't have a grade for those. Now the other quizzes that you had from last class, the ones that you did, right? The problems that you did that y'all made up. I have those graded. I did put these grades in to Canvas. I believe I did. Has anyone checked their grades? Said you were gonna combine those. Yeah, but I, I will combine them on, on the computer. You can have these back. So you can get those at the end, yeah. So please turn in those questions from last time that I asked you to go home and do. It was just one and four, correct? Yes, it was just one and four. Okay, let's start out. Um, I did. I did have a request to maybe talk about one of the problems on here. Um, was it the the angular one? Did you? Was that your question also? Yeah, we had the question on the angular one, and then I just had a question about the setup for the first problem because you didn't say which equation you want—a standard equation or a general equation. Yeah. Okay. All right. We can do do that one after class, and then what about the the runner on the track? What? What about that? The, the difference between the angular and linear? What was it? He was running around a track. With the radius, of radius was what? 120. 120. And then did uh, what? Seven laps? Was it? Five laps. Five laps in 14 minutes. And I asked for linear speed and angular speed, right? So we'll say part A, part B, angular. All right, so in terms of, let's do angular speed because that's actually the easier of the two. If you can figure out omega, which is the angle that the person travels through over the time it takes to travel it, that's what you needed. And do we know the angle that this person traveled in this, yeah. this trip? So 10 laps, right? 10 times around this circle. So let's say they started here. One time around, that's two pi, right? right. Then you do that 10 times. Okay. So 20 pi radians is the angle. Isn't it 10 pi? Uh, 10, oh five, sorry, five laps, five laps. Five times, <laughs> y'all are all, what? <laughs> five times two pi is 10 pi, right? So that's, that's five laps times two pi each time over the time, 14 minutes. And you could, you could leave this as like 10 pi over 14 um, radians per minute. You could leave it like that, or you could reduce the fraction. You could reduce this and put 5 pi over 7 radians per minute. Or if you wanted to, you could even do 5 times 3.1415 and get a decimal approximation, and that would have been fine. Did anybody do it with degrees? What about dividing this into 14 radians? Oh, yeah. It, you mean just do that with the pi? Oh yeah, that's that's the same. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm. I think you're saying like this, uh, 14 pi, like that, like writing it more like the pi to the side. Yeah, but I'm yes. it. You. So I divided it. Oh, got a decimal. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's as long as the pi is there, it's fine. Yeah, but my advice would be that if you're going to make this a decimal, you may as well make pi a decimal too, because you, you're already approximating it. You may as well approximate pi. It's not wrong. It's just I would recommend doing that. 
Okay, anybody do it in angles, or did I tell you radians? No, I didn't tell you? When okay. You, when you told us how to do angular speed, you uh -huh. never really did an uh, actual problem. Actual example. problem, yeah. yeah. And you did linear again. So did linear, yeah. Where we're okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I just plugged what I got from the I did do one in the homework, I'm pretty sure, though. Yeah. I did do one on a video in the homework. So, okay, so uh, that okay for that one? Okay, linear speed's a little different. And for that one, we need to use, what, what's the formula for it? It's V, right? V? And it was, yeah, S over T. S is your total arc length. And that's R theta over T. And so you're going to do pretty much the same thing we did here, except you're going to include the radius this time. You're going to do radius, right? which is 120 feet times our angle, the angle we turn through, which again is 10 pi. So 10 pi over 14 minutes. Uh, yes, minutes. So you just simplify all this. This would be, let's see, 1,200 pi over 14 what per minute here? Is this feet per minute? Does that clarify things? Would R omega have given you the same answer? Yeah, there was another formula we could have used. Yeah. Yeah, because um, this right here is omega. So R times omega would have also worked. See, these problems, these formulas, I like to, when I think about them, I, I try not to think so much about like formulas as much as I think about like what's happening. Like if you're looking at linear speed, you need to know the total distance you travel divided by the total time, distance over time. So distance is going to be a measurement of this, which is arc length. It's the circumference five times, right? And then divide that by the total time. Good. All right, let's get some administrative stuff out of the way. We have a test scheduled for next Tuesday. I want to push it to Thursday. Is that any objections on that? No. That gives us one extra day? OK. So let's make that official. The test that was scheduled for Tuesday is now <laughs> scheduled for Thursday. And we still have more to do. And I don't know, I, I have to be honest. I left class last time, and it just I felt empty. I felt. I felt like just things things aren't going aren't going the way I, I want them to go. In terms of, I just feel like some of you aren't making the connections. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but that's just kind of like the feeling I'm getting. So then I graded the quizzes, and the quizzes were good. So I'm like, uh, I don't know what to think here. Um, do you feel like I need to do any sort of like review of the of the six trig functions and how they relate to right triangles? The identities part, like what's the, the like sine squared one. What it, what in in terms of that? What do you mean? Um, I got from the homework on like on numbers like forty-seven. Whenever it got to like one minus cosine squared twenty degrees minus cosine squared. Wait, which one are we working? Uh, Seven point two. Number forty-seven. Okay, yeah. So those I wouldn't expect you to have done extremely well on because they're using the relationship between, there's a table on page 526 that shows a relationship between sine and cosine. Um, and I'll be quite frank here, I'm not going to ask you anything on that homework set, 528, that comes from problems 37 through 53. Nothing, nothing from there. Okay? Those are cute little problems, but you know, I, I always come at this from the perspective of what you need in calculus. Like, what are you gonna need in Cal 1, Cal 2, and if you go to Cal 3, like, what's important? And those are not, those don't ever show up. I mean, they're just, they're cool results of a formula, but it's not something that you're going to need. 
So I can eliminate those. Um, <clears throat> in terms of in terms of the uh, common angles and the the values of the six trig functions at the common angles and memorizing those things, how how do you feel about that? Are you starting to remember them now? Are you getting there? Yeah. Okay. You have till next Thursday to have it hardwired. I'm just trying to see if there's any, any loose ends that you feel I, I should tie up. I want to give an opportunity to tie them up right now. If not, I'm, I mean, I'm ready. <clears throat> and I thought I, would, I thought I would share a story with you, but I'm going to mute my microphone because I don't think it's appropriate for the <laughs>
Now, let's continue what we were doing last time. We are ready to use our calculators today to find the values of trig functions. We were waiting for you, so we're ready now. We're going to start. We haven't done anything yet, so we're ready to go. So we, uh, we learned last time that we can figure out like sine of 30 degrees, because that's something we have to memorize, right? That is uh, half. Who said that? So how do you know that's a half? Do you have it memorized? No, not yet. I you don't have it memorized yet? OK, that's OK. So I'll tell you exactly how the, the way I think about that. Now, it takes me like a millisecond to do it now, because I've done it so many times. But this is actually, if I slow that down, this is what I'm doing. I'm actually seeing a triangle with a 30 degree. Okay, I'm seeing that. And I'm thinking sine is this side over this side. And this is the smaller of the two legs of this triangle. And I told you last time it was either going to be 1 half or root 3 over 2. And 1, right, 1 is smaller than root 3. So I know that this sign is going to be the 1 half, not the root 3 over 2. That's it all slowed down. So, or if you memorize it, that's OK. So we have that. We can do this for 30 degrees. We can do all six trig functions. We can do it for 60 degrees, and we can do it for 45 degrees, right? And I, and I ended class talking about if we wanted to measure the height of a building, we could actually do this with a protractor by just walking backwards, finding 30 degrees, and measuring this distance. Remember me doing that at the end of class last time? Yeah? But what if we can't get ourselves to 30 degrees? What if, what if we can't work with one of these common angles? Like, or 45. Like, what if, what if we don't get to choose the angle? Then what do we do, right? What do we do? Well, fortunately, our calculators will do that for us. So our calculators, everyone have their calculators? Go ahead and get them out. Remember, your phone does not qualify as a calculator for the test. All right. Pardon? I did unmute. Yes, I did. Thank you, though. Yeah, I know. It's happened before. All right, so with calculators, the first thing that you have to establish when you're using your, your calculator is whether or not you're going to be in degree mode or radian mode, because your calculator needs to know that, right? So degree or radian mode, everybody needs to know how to switch on their calculator. And how are you going to know which to be in? It depends on what you're yeah, it depends on the question, right, that's being posed. If you see angles and degrees, you're going to be in degree mode or you're going to be in radian otherwise. So I want everyone to make sure they can switch from one mode to the other. And if you can't, just, sh just raise your hand real quick right now and I'll come help you try and switch. Degree, radian, we're all good? OK. So go ahead and try it. Ty I want you to find your sine key on your calculator. And I want you to do sine of 30 degrees. And what's it giving you? It should be 0.5, right? 0.5? And we know that's 1 half, right? Now try cosine of 30 degrees. Unless you have a fancy calculator, it's not going to give you root 3 over 2. It's going to give you 0.866, something like that. All right, but this is root 3 over 2. That's what it is. It's the approximation. But the great thing about the calculator is that we can do this for any angle. So any angle we want. So why don't we do like sine of 10 degrees? Now, before you, before you hit enter, is that going to be bigger than this or smaller than this, do you think? Is the answer to this going to be bigger than that number or smaller? Smaller? So again, try and visualize a triangle with a very small angle. Right? Like that. Then this side divided by this side, right, opposite over hypotenuse, should be really small. Because look, look how small that is compared to the hypotenuse. Small number divided by big number should be small, right? What do you get? 0.174. So this is approximately 0.174. Now, let's reverse the idea. What about cosine of 10 degrees? 
you're going to have a really big side divided by a pretty big side. In fact, aren't they almost the same size? And if I take a number that's almost the same size as the other one and divide them, that number should be really close to what? One. And it, it should be, right? Cosine of 10 degrees on your calculator is what? Point nine five something? Yes? No, nine four. OK. Nine four, blah, blah, blah. OK, so this, is that wrong? Nine eight four. OK, I didn't hear the eight. Point nine eight four. All right. So this is, this is very nice. Now, if you want to know how your calculator is doing that, in Calculus 2, I will, sh I will actually, I would show you how your calculator is computing that. Because your calculator is not sitting there drawing triangles and doing ratios. It's actually doing something else. And uh, for now, we're just going to say, hey, look, it's doing it for us, and we're happy with that. Right? OK. Now, how can we utilize this? Well, let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Tangent key. Maybe I'll give you a few more. How about tangent of 5? Let me get my calculator out so I can start checking you. Hey, man, my calculator's batteries are dead. No, I always have a backup. <laughs> All right. We're going to uh, we're going to see what people are getting here. What do you got? Zero point. Zero eight. Anyone else get something else? This is five degrees, right? Oh, is it five degrees? Did I put a degree symbol? I I did. So I I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. This, you must switch your mode now over to radian, because I didn't put a degree symbol there. So you go into your mode now, you switch it to radian, and then recalculate, and you should get something around negative 3.38. Okay? That is not the same answer as 5 degrees. So we always have to be careful with that when we're presented a problem. If the degree symbol's not there, you better be in radians. Uh, how about this? How about secant of 72 degrees? Now, you probably don't have a secant key. What, what is secant? Secant is the reciprocal of which tr trig function? Cosine. cosine, right? So this is the reciprocal of cosine. Um, if you look at your cosine key, a lot of you, I, I'm looking out, a lot of you do have like TI calculators. I see some others. But you should have on your cosine key, most of you have above it like a cosine with a little negative one up there. This is not, not secant. This is not secant. This is what's called arc cosine, which is the inverse cosine function, which is not at all secant. It is, we will use it later, but not yet. So think about that, ne think about that negative one I this way. Um, you, you remember in algebra you had functions that would take in numbers and spit out numbers? And then you would come up with what's called the inverse function, which would take those numbers back to where they came from? OK, that's an inverse. That's what this little cosine with the negative one is. It, it would do the opposite of what tangent does. It would take the answer and spit it back to an angle. Does that make sense? Like, it would do this. Uh, let me do it for, uh, like, cosine inverse of that 0.866. What angle was it that when we took cosine, we got this? 30, 30 degrees? The answer to this would be 30 degrees. That, that's the way the inverse works. We're not going to do this yet, OK? But it takes numbers back to the angles they came from. This is just the reciprocal, 1 divided by cosine. So you, you actually have to type it in that way. You have to understand that this is 1 divided by cosine of 72 degrees. And just make sure you put your parentheses in the right place. And this is why I have you have your calculators out right now. Actually, you may not need parentheses for this. Ooh, I didn't switch back out of that mode. Hold on. 
I need to be in degrees. 72. I've got something. What do you got? 3.23, 2.34 approximately. And in terms of like significant figures and all that stuff, in this class, two, three decimal places, we're good, okay? We're not trying to land a man on the moon right now, okay? <laughs> we're just trying to get an answer that makes sense. Good? Questions? All right, now let's see how we can use this. So what if we have a situation like this? I'm, I'm trying to give you some applications here, example. Let's say that we are, again, trying to measure the height of this building. And we go over here and we measure out from here to here to be, let's say, 67 degrees. And we also measure from here to here to be 108 feet. Then can we find the height of this building? Can we find this height? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yes? We should. If this is a right triangle, which we're kind of assuming it is, right, we should be able to find this. So what I'm going to do right now is, is it's going to look a little different from last class. And this is why I left last class a little bit unhappy, is that the way I presented it, I felt was more confusing than it had to be. Um, I have an angle. I want to know its opposite side. And I have its adjacent side, right? So I need some way to use my trig functions to connect an angle with its opposite and its adjacent. Which trig function does that for me? Tangent, tangent right? Cotangent does it also, doesn't it? But tangent's, you know, I guess the one we use more, more commonly. So I'm going to just write down now tangent of this angle, 67 degrees, must be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, just like that. By the definition of tangent, that's, that's what it is, right? And I'm trying to find h. And look at h is just sitting here staring at me. And all I have to do is get rid of the 108 on the bottom. So if I multiply both sides by 108, I'm there, right? So long as I can figure out what tangent of 67 <laughs> is. And I can use my calculator for that now. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by 108. And it cancels here, and you get h's, 108, tangent 67. And you could probably type all of that in at one time on your calculator and get an answer. So is this building tall or not? Eh, pretty tall. 254.43? OK, so 254.43 feet equals h. A little um, added little element to that story I told you earlier is that um, part of the reason that I've chosen this career of doing this is exactly because of what I had to go through. Like, I enjoy the fact that this school gives people an opportunity to go from high school to a university like a bridge and that you can still achieve whatever you want to achieve. That's still possible. You don't have to be like the valedictorian of your school, you know. When I, was, when I was finishing up my, my graduate program stuff, I mean, I was competing with some very, very smart people. I would have never envisioned that, you know? So the fact that I can be here, and hopefully there'll be a couple of you that I'll hear from in a, in a couple of years and be like, yeah, you know, I'm working for NSA now, and, you know. <laughs> it's weird, I've had a lot of students lately that have come back to me that need me for a reference for their security clearance. At like NSA, it's crazy. Like they need my address and all this information about me. I'm like, what? Okay. All right. 
Yes? Does that seem straightforward to you? Okay, let me, let me try and make it harder then. It's still going to be doable, all right, but it's just going to be a little more involved, all right? We just need to be a little more comfortable with things. Um, I don't think we're ready for that one yet. Okay, how about this one? We have That's supposed to be a baseball diamond. That's supposed to be a baseball diamond. That's Yeah, that doesn't look does, doesn't look good. Let me try it again. There we go. So here's what I'll tell you. These are 90 degree angles here, like that. And does anybody know the distance from home plate to first base? I have no idea. I'm not a baseball person. Let's make it up. What do y'all think it is? 30 feet? I think 30 feet's like this room. I think it's got to be more than that. 50, 60? All right, I'll go with, I'm going to go with 42 feet, okay? I don't think it is, but let's say that that's 42 feet. All right? I'm going to call this right here X. I want to know what X is. So what, okay, what's your thought here? You're saying these two angles have to be the same. Are you talking about this angle and this angle have to be the same? Do you all agree with that? Now we're assuming that this is a true square. Because if this isn't a true square, we can't assume that. But because I'm saying that this is a baseball diamond, these distances are all the same. So all these sides have the same length. Then if that's 42, that's 42, right? This we can figure out. But you're talking about the angle. And I like the fact you're talking about the angle because that's what we're discussing. There's more than one way to solve this problem, and you don't have to use a calculator to do it. But, all right, so you're saying this angle right here is 45 degrees. Everyone agree? Yeah. What now? Do tangent? Like we did oh, okay. Time. So where's your right triangle? You're talking about this right triangle right here? Yeah. From the okay, so, side. yeah, if I, if I look at it, if I kind of tilt it, it's like, oh wow, that's bad. 45, this is 42. Right? Yeah. That's this picture right here just kind of turned sideways like that. And what we're trying to find now is this hypotenuse, which is this one right here, um, X. So 42 right. and 42. You got both lengths the same size, right? Both sides are the same? These two are the same, yes. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying you could get this without any trig functions, just a squared plus b squared is c squared. But let's try and do it with the trig function. How's that? You have an angle, you have the adjacent side, you want to know the hypotenuse. Oh. So what connects adjacent and the hypotenuse together? Cosine. cosine. Yes? Mm -hmm. So what would I write here? Cosine, cosine. 45 degrees equals 42 over x. 42 over x. Okay, now this problem, anyone have a question on that? Are we all okay with that? You could also do secant. Now, what is different about this equation and the one that we had previous to this one? Yeah, the x is on the bottom. See, on the last one wasn't the h we were solving for, it was on top, so all we did was multiply both sides by 108 and we were done. This time x is on the bottom, and you've got to get it out of there. You can't leave it there. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides by x right now. Yep, and then let's just look at what we have first. And then now, do you see that x is, is now appearing up in the numerator over here? And now I want to get rid of the cosine 45, so I divide it. So I divide cosine 45 on both sides. They go away and you get x is equal to 
42 over cosine of 45 degrees, and that you can do on your calculator. Okay. Okay. Could we have figured it out first before we moved everything over, the, the, what cosine was? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. But then you'll just be working with the decimal, and that's fine. 42 divided by that. What are you all getting? 59.4, okay. Feet, good. I'm approximating it, it's not exactly 59.4. All right. This one's going to be a little harder. All right. So I need to make this where it's like physically difficult to do it any other way. So this is a view of me standing on a cliff. Okay. And then over here on the ground, over here, way far away from me, I have a building. All right? So it's exaggerated, but that's just so you can see it. And let's say that I know that this cliff is 400 feet tall. With me? And I have a way of measuring from there to there and from there to there, right? And then I need a reference line for you here. Let's say that this is 20 degrees from here to here. And let's say that from here to here is 34 degrees. We call this angle of depression. Angle of depressions are measured from horizontal down. So I have an angle of depression that goes from me to the top of the building of 20 degrees and an angle of depression from me to the bottom of the building of 34 degrees. And what do you think my question is? How tall is the building? I'm going to give you about five minutes to work together on this, to just, just to come up with an idea or an approach. All right? And then we'll work through it together, and I'll, I'll take recommendations from the audience.
any volunteers that want to lead me through this and how, how they're, you're almost there? Anybody want to share their approach? You want to find this? That's how you started? Okay, how, so how did you find that? Can I draw that big triangle over here? So you're talking about this triangle um, right here, yes? Okay, well let's just go with it. So what do you know about this triangle? That degree is 56 on top. Right here, this is 56? No, the inside of it is 56. This is 56. And that's because 20, this is 34, so the rest has to give you 90? Yes? Yes. Okay. I agree with this. And then what, this is 400 over here? And that will give you... You, could, you should be able to get this side, and this side, you can get them both. Yeah. But you went after this hypotenuse? Okay, now, I, I just, I wanna ask you why you went after the hypotenuse? Just so that I could find the, the, that, and if you know that, then you see the sort of, I don't know. If I know this, then, how am I gonna find this? No. Okay. Well, I I know I'm just trying to I'm trying to like figure out why you're wanting to go after the hypotenuse. Like how is that going to benefit you long term? Cuz all this is going to give you this right here is this length right here. But how do you use that to get something? Well, I had the other group was going to go what what did you have? So our final answer was like 226, is that right? I don't know yet. I just made up the problem. Yeah. So let's see what they did. And you could get you could get to this, but you're gonna use the hypotenuse, and then you're gonna have to do other work. Okay. Let's talk through. Can we talk through your logic first? What's your logic is? What are you gonna go after here? Okay. So since we know that that we have 400 feet, we're gonna figure out what that straight line is. Okay, so you're going off the idea that you know, like, this whole thing is 400 straight across. And if I extended this line across, like, yes, that's, okay, and then what? So I want to find the length of the green line first for what I'm doing. You're going to find this? Yes, and I, I used a tangent of 34 degrees uh, equals... Okay, so you're going to go after this green line. I believe you'll be able to get it. What are you going to do once you have this green line? Okay, so I ended up figuring out that that was 476 feet. Okay, so you figure out this is 476 feet. Now what? Um, so I'm going to do the same thing, but with just that top 20. This 20 triangle right here? Right, and I'm going to use the tangent. Okay, so let's let's see if everyone follows this. I don't know if everyone did this the same way. I doubt it. But okay, so what was your group's name? Did y'all have a group name or no? Gold team. Yeah. What is it? Gold team. Gold team. So gold team went. They said, "Look, we're going to look at this big triangle right here." Okay, and when they look at that big triangle right there, this was 400. This was 34, and then they will be able to get that side, won't they? Yeah. Okay. They can get that side. So now they have this side, don't they? And once they have that side, I believe your logic then was that you can now look at this triangle right here. Am I incorrect to say that? That is correct. So if you look at this triangle, it looks like this. You know this side, because that's this side, right? You know that this is 20. Um, yeah, 20 degrees. And so my guess is you're going to go after this side. Okay, so now you have that side, right? So if you know that this, let's say you know that this is 100, right? Then what's this? 300, because it's got to add up to be 400. That will work. Did anybody else do it a different way? You did it a different way? Okay. 
Does everyone understand that approach? OK, so that would work. But I want to hear a different approach. I don't have an approach yet. I, I mean, I just kind of made up the problem, so I hadn't really thought through it. OK, I like that. Good. Now, who else wants to volunteer their approach? Did you all have something different? Sure, sure. I think it has a little weird, a little weird way. First, okay. I have to the angles that were each of the angles. So I call them A, B, and C angles. And I have A and. Are you saying A, B, and C? Uh -huh. A, B, and C. Okay. Right. So then I have uh, 20 degrees, and then I found that I found B from subtracting out. Yeah, from the 90 degrees. So yep. 90. This was supposed to go the yeah. whole way. That's so, the whole way. Okay. So 90 minus 34 to figure out C. So you got that this angle was 56. 56, correct. Okay. That's, I think, what you did over here, right? You got that this was 56. Everyone agree with that? If that's 34, that's 56. Okay. And you just took the two angles to find out the B, which is... Uh, yeah, if you want a difference, right. 14. That's 14 right here? Right. Okay. Go ahead. So this one right here? Bottom. Okay. And we're looking at that and trying to find the hypotenuse. Ah, that's what you all did too. You got the hypotenuse, the first group right. did the hypotenuse. So you did this triangle right here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And you got, you know that this was 400, you know that this was 56, and you went and got this side. Right? right. Okay. But, okay, now what are you going to do with that? over, okay, I'll work it, I'll work it. Cosine 56 is uh, 0.559. No, 400 over, yeah, what did you call that, H? X, yeah, we called it X. You called it X? Confusing. Okay, so X, and then that means this is X, and then you solved for X. Just give me what X was, I'll trust you. Did you get X? 715? 715? Close enough. All right? Is that all right? And now you can do the same thing. You can just find the same thing they did earlier. We already know the 400 feet on the opposite side of the triangle. Okay, so now you did 1950. This would have worked with you getting the hypotenuse also. If you now look at this triangle right here, right, then you know that it is 400. And then this side is 715, right? Agreed? And then what? See, this is the part where I'm, I'm curious what you're going to do with this. Because you're building. Your building comes in like this, right? Like I, this is your building right here. So how are you going to get anything from that? Well, then you can find the missing side, and then you can find that smaller. You can right. find this missing side? Yes. And OK. You find that, Once you find that. Then on the main one, go back to the main picture, then you can find that top triangle. So yes. now you have this one, and then you have the top triangle. OK, yes, you would have one addition. You have another triangle in there. Yes. All right, so look, the whole point of, of me putting this up here is just to show you, I mean, prob this is about problem solving. This is about there's multiple ways to get to the same answer. Some paths are longer than the others, right? Some of them require drawing three different triangles. Some of them, I think it was just two. But as long as we get to the answer, that's what we're looking for. So does everyone feel like they could get this now? Do we have an answer? Do we have an answer? I don't think we have an answer yet. For, the for, the, for what's the height of the building? I thought you said it was 300. Uh, no. Oh, it was no. 100. I said if that was 100. I said if that was 100, then it would be 300. 173. OK, why don't you all just finish that up and turn it in to me next time? You got it all? OK. Yeah, and don't turn it in to me on your notes that you're taking today. Do it on a separate sheet of paper.
Make it nice and clean and pretty. That, I'm going to count that as a quiz grade. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. We're going to move on. 7 4. So I was talking to a buddy of mine about pre-cal the other day. Because again, I was very kind of unhappy with the way class ended last time. I don't know, maybe again, I felt that you didn't, but um, I kind of wish that I would just start trig functions with this. Like instead of doing the, tri the right triangles, I just sometimes wish we would just start here because this is the most general way that we define our trig functions. I've already defined them for you, right? Sokotoa, sine, opposite over hypotenuse, all that junk, right? But all of that was based upon a picture of a right triangle, yes? And the problem with the right triangle picture is that it only, you're, you're limited. If I draw a right triangle, and I'm talking about this angle here, theta, my theta is limited, isn't it? I can only have a theta between 0 and 90 degrees, right? Because if I go past 90, I can't have a right triangle anymore. Do you all agree with that? If I try and draw this like that, <laughs> it's no longer a right triangle. This side's not going to work, right? So that means if I say, you know, what's sign of um, 120 degrees, you're not going to be able to deal with that, right? Or if I'm trying to find a distance, let's say, let's say I'm, uh, I'm standing here, is looking at me from the top, and I've got a friend of mine who's standing right here and another friend of mine who's standing right here, right? And I'm trying to find, I know this angle, and I'm trying to find the distance between them or something, then this angle's, you know, if it's bigger than 90, all my trig functions are gone. I can't use them. Understand? So this section deals with what are the trig functions of any angle. And what we do to establish these trig functions at any angle is we first need to understand that whatever we come up with here should also work for right triangles. Because it's not like, hey, you know, it's one thing if you're a right triangle, it's something different if you're not. It should work in both worlds, in the right triangle world and in the arbitrary angle world.